Let us put the service in the hands of the Lord, truly. Hallelujah. Jesus is in this place. Lord God, I ask you, Lord God, have your way in this service on today. Lord, I put this service in your hands, Lord. Lord, I ask you to encourage and uplift your people on today, God. Lord, walk up and down these aisles, God, in the name of Jesus. Let us not leave off the way we came in, Jesus. Do something new in each and every one of our lives on today. Oh, God, give us all the broken in a contract spirit, Lord. Help us to break our wheels, break up our fallen ground, God. Lord, put us all on the fast, Lord, to seek you with all of our hearts. Help us to find you, Lord. Call where you're near, Jesus. Strengthen a man of God. Lord God, strengthen his companion, Lord. Lord, bless them. Lord God, all this week, Lord, bless us all, all this week. But Lord, right now, ask that you would bless the pastor, strengthen his mind and body. Lord, let him not ever compromise your word. Help him to preach the word of God. Oh, God, Lord, with such a liberty, oh, God. Oh, God, with the pull on that word today, God. Do something in each and every one of our hearts today, God. Let not the devil take out anything you've sown in our hearts, Lord. Bring all things back to our remembrance. Lord, I ask you to answer those prayers that we have been praying for so many years. Let them be manifested this week, God. Meet the needs of all of your people, Lord. Let not one day go unpaid. Let not one bill go unpaid, Lord. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, do something for us this week, God. Oh, God, give them a safe trip when they leave, Lord God. Go on and come, Lord, in the name of Jesus, oh God. We give you all the glory, all the honor and praise. Come on, clap your hands with Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, 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 he set me free. He broke the bonds of prison off of me. I glorify my Jesus. Praise the Lord. He set me free. He set me free. He was singing. He set me free. He broke the bonds of prison off of me. I glorify my Jesus. Thank you.
And I was praying before that service, and I said, God, I need you. I've been praying, you know, before that, Lord, I need you to change my heart. Lord, I need you to do something for me. I need you to fix me, God. I said, whatever's wrong, I need you to fix it. And I just thank God for that word. When you brought that word for Wednesday night, that done something for me. Lord came in, he touched my heart. He fixed my heart, he, he healed that broken heart. He changed my heart. I can't explain it, but it was like that lady that, that, that had the issue of blood. She said, if I could just but touch the hem of his garment, I know I would be made whole. And she felt in her body, when she touched his body, she felt in her body that that issue, you know, that, that, that it was gone, it was done. I felt in my body. I can't explain it, but the Lord done something for me that wins tonight. He held my heart. He fixed my heart. And I thank him for it. I thank you for that word, Lord. I thank you for that word, Pastor, because that word was for me. And I have to give God the glory, the honor, and the praise. I can't explain it, but whatever he, whatever was there, he took it out. God, you know, he just he healed that broken heart. And he fixed it, he, he made it, he, he worked it out. Yeah. And I just have to give God the glory, the honor, and the praise. I should have stood up yesterday and, you know, and testified yesterday. And I was contemplating on your daughter and I was waiting on somebody else to get up. And I sit too long. But I just give God the glory for what he done. I thank him for that word. Because that word is powerful. God, he, he's, he's concerned, you know, he, he hear our prayers. And I thank him, you know, for healing my heart, for making me whole. I thank him for what he done. I don't know what else he done, but he done something for me. He touched me. He changed me. Hallelujah. He took away that heart of stone, and he gave me a heart of flesh. And that was been my prayer. Lord, take away this heart of, this, this heart of stone. I know I knew, hallelujah, that something in my, my heart wasn't right. I would hold on to stuff. I would try to forget. Hallelujah. But even when I thought I had forgiven, it was something still there. But God had taken all of that out. He put a love down in my heart. He put compassion down in my heart. He's giving me a heart. Of, he's taking that heart of stone away. He's giving me a heart of flesh. And I didn't have to give God the glory, the honor, and the praise for what he done for me. I can truly say, thank God I'm free. Hallelujah. I can truly say, thank God I'm free. Thank God I'm free. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you for just introducing me to the word. My auntie Sarah 
for bringing us down to the, to the country down there where we understand the truth. We, we hear the truth. We, we, we love the truth. You know, I can't go to anybody's church. So I'm not even hey, hey. Michael. I can't go. Uh, I just thank all of y'all for holding us in prayer and, and, and just being here. And I just ask y'all to please help me with the mind to pray because that even, you know, that is even to have a mind to pray, that to wake up and want to pray and stuff. I wake up every morning at 4 and it's just like I sit there and I sit there and it's just like, Lord, I just want the mind to at least pray because that is something I used to always do. And I just thank them for just getting me back here. You know, and I thank you guys for just loving me and just being here. You know, us the same way we need you guys. You know? I don't know how you know it. Yeah, me with one service a week, I don't know, but I thank them so much. Thank you guys. Amen. Anybody else? Hold of her. I don't know what it's going to take, 
But Lord, you get a hold of her. I ain't gonna say, Lord, can do something for me. He can do it for my kids. And I'm saying, Lord, save these kids. Not just my kids. I got these three nephews that I'm burdened for. Lord, get a hold of this man. Because we're going to, in this time, we live here, they need the Lord. They need the Lord. They need the, I tell you, you better start praying, girl. You better start praying and ask about the order your steps coming and going. You don't know what you do. We don't know what's ahead of the next day. And I ask the Lord to help me. You help me to maintain a prayer life. Help me to keep my mouth, my oil. Help me to keep oil in my mouth and my help me to keep it uh and burn. I'm asking the Lord to help me even to really get in the word of God. You know, and I keep I keep my other brain but uh, I said, Lord, oh, if you help me, I keep trying because the mother's working and everything. And I call um, these so I guess I'll be tired during the day. And the kids they had to get up a little early for school. So uh, I tried to get in for in the morning. Then when I come back, I tried to get in that word. That day I had a chance to get in the word of God. And it got so good to where I didn't want to put it down, but I had to go get in the steam because I don't I don't really want them well, they don't have buses at the school they go to. You know, so I just say, then I have to go, Lord, get up, take them to uh, walk these steps. I said, well, Lord, I need to exercise. You know, so, and I just be so tired in the body. But I know I need to bring this body under subjection to a little history. Yes. Yes. So I'm just asking the Lord to help me. God, pray for me. That I hope that God, because I know it's more than just come to church and so yes. And I said, Lord, you help me. I don't care if in the story, he got me to preach these souls. Even yeah. my nieces and nephews, you got me to preach them because, you know, they spare they, souls. And I want to save. I know he knows I want to save. I want the Lord to save them. And y'all just pray that I hope they got I know it was up a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. sister back here, sister Hunt, sister Hunter, sister Hunt. But uh, I just want to say, you know, I agree. I really need to pull myself and come to the side. You know, it's just a lot going on. It just seems like I just have so much going on in my life. You know, I got work. I'm trying to make sure that I keep the Lord first at all times. And I ask you guys to pray for me. It's, it's really been tough, you know, trying to get myself up and pray like I used to. You know, and read my Bible like I used to. It just seems like so much going on. I got work. I got guitar lessons. I got this. I got that. You know, but I want him to be first. You know, and I cannot. I want my light to shine at work. I want my light to shine wherever I'm at. And I want to be set apart. You know, and sometimes people try to pull you in. You know, they know that you, you're different. You know, your friends and some of your family. You know, but they still try to pull you in their way. You know, and you try you pull back. And me, I don't want to be, you know, rude or nothing, you know, seem like I'm rude, but it's just things that I can't do. And sometimes it's really hard to try to explain that to them. And I know that they love God too, but it's hard sometimes really because I don't know really how to bring it across to them so it won't sound like I'm being judgmental because I've been there too myself. I used to be in the world, I used to be in the streets and the clubs and all that, you know. So trying to bring that across to someone without being judgmental can sometimes be very difficult. So I'm asking the Lord to help me. And y'all pray for me because this word is so true. I mean, it is very true. It's nothing like it. And I'm like this young lady. I just can't go to anybody's church. If people invite me, I have to politely decline because I know what type of church it is and I just don't want to get wrapped up in that, you know. So just pray for me. Thank you. We all please stand. Great is the Lord, sing praise to be praised. In the city of our God, in the mountain of His holiness, through the most joy of the whole world. In Mount Zion, on the battle of Mount, in the city of His grace. 
overcome these services, but put a fight in us and give us more grace. Lord, so many are casting away their confidence, but you said you would have a remnant and a people. We thank you for moving in the lives of your people, all the testimonies, the scripture that was read, the testimonies of how you're moving for your people. Lord, we ask you to bless those that cannot be here. Strengthen Mom and Pop Smith, Sister Tawanda, Sister Triplett, Lord, heal and deliver and meet all these needs. Pop Henderson, making his way out to the house of prayer. Brother Akon on today. Lord, we don't ever want to forget to pray for him. Lord, for his deliverance, for a miracle. Lord, he needs a miracle. We're asking him because you are a miracle working God. All the sisters that were praying that's battling heart trouble, that you would strengthen their heart. Lord, we're asking you to stretch forth your hand in this hour, Lord, to meet your people. Meet these, Lord, that's settled in their hearts, that they're not going to let you go unless you bless them. Lord, we know this Bible is real. We know your word is true. We know that Jesus Christ came to save sinners. Lord, and we believe in you to reach this generation. Bless this little house of prayer. Lord, it's not much to look at, but if your grace is here, if your spirit meets this people, Lord, when we gather together, if you reach out of these walls, Lord, pass these parking lots and apartments and save and deliver in this neighborhood. Lord, I don't have faith for all of Missouri or maybe even all of St. Louis, but you can give us this neighborhood. You can give us these apartments. You can give us, Lord, all these streets and these corners. Lord, to take back from the devil. Send a revival, Lord, even in Labor Day. Lord, when we're outside, Lord, let your power and your spirit settle on this place for salvation, healing, and deliverance in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for Sharia, her legs, and her body, and her healing. Deliverance for this whole family. All these evil demonic things are they need to be free from. Make it so, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank God for being in the house of prayer. Amen. I don't know, Brother Archie. It seemed like it was better the way it was before a little bit. Brother Archie. It seemed like it was better a little bit before. Amen. We are. Um, Thank you, God, for all of you being here in the house of prayer. I appreciate all the testimonies. I believe the Lord is moving. It's just a, a different time. That's, that's a little bit. It's a different time that we're living in. Amen. But we have to persevere. You know, Paul told us in Ephesians, that's good. Paul told us in Ephesians to put on the whole arm of God that we might be able to stand in the evil day. And I don't know how many people believe in watching the news, but I believe in watching the news. And I'm convinced that the evil day has come on us. And it's come on what I've never seen. Amen. The fire is burning like Canada is burning. In Washington, Oregon, Northern California is on fire today. And they can't stop these things. These things are out of control. Amen. And you just have one natural disaster after another. I mean, every not every week, every three or four days, something new is going on. Amen. So it pays us. Thank you, Brother Brown, to be in the will of the Lord. And Paul said that as you see the day approaching, he said, come to church more. Ain't that what he said? As you see the day approaching, don't forsake to assemble yourselves together. And Jesus put it this way. He said, you know all them folks at that tower in Siloam fell on? He said, do you think that they were sinners above all the other sinners? He said, I tell you nay, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Amen. So we have to hide ourselves in the Lord Jesus Christ because the cities of the nations are being turned into hell. Your police can't stop this crime. The police can't stop. They're inventing new ways every day. Amen. I saw the news the other day. They're just running into these places, you know, with these um, $3,000 to $5,000 handbags. 
Amen. And still in life, I ain't got no sympathy for him. So I hand back the five thousand dollars. Somebody got to be crazy. Five thousand dollars for a handbag, and you got thirty-two dollars in it. What kind of nonsense is that? And, you know, I feel sorry for the people that are struggling in their business and can't hardly make it. You know, these little store owners around here, people going in and still, you know, folks selling them. You know, I, I, I hope it didn't happen, but I don't feel no sorry for that. But people are, you know, driving cars in the buildings and stealing cell phones and electronics. And the days are just getting more and more evil, and the police can't handle it. And they're having trouble finding police officers, school teachers, amen, at an all time. Well, y'all watching the news. People don't want to teach these bad kids. Like Sister Wright said, these kids are something else. You know, that's why you need to plead the blood of Jesus over your children and pray over your children because demons are getting a hold of kids. When we were young, they, they would spank us and we would straighten up. Now, now you spank them and they call DFS on them. They got cell phones at eight years old. They, they'll turn you in. You can't do that with these kids. What it's going to take is a move of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And I'm burdened for it. Amen. One time I was shut in by myself. The big sister called me selfish. But I can't always have a shut in for the church. Sometimes I, I'm with Sister Rice. I got to get some time by myself. So this uh, last shut in, last week, I had to be by myself. And we will have a, another seeking the Lord time for the church. And we need to have some prayer up here in St. Louis. Somebody say amen. Somebody else say amen. 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 We need to ask for our prayer in St. Louis because I feel these powers and these pressures. Amen. Don't you think the devil will come? I appreciate little Sister Maria's testimony. That helps me. Amen. Because the devil always telling me just shut it down. People up there don't want church no more. Amen. And it's a burden. Now they're charging us almost $2,500 a month rent. You know, they ain't fixing this. This has been sitting this way for weeks. You know, and they ain't doing nothing on it. They blame the city. You know, but I'm, I'm, I'm fighting. I'm battling. Amen. So when I know somebody wants the word, up there, and I know some of y'all old ones love the word and want the word, but you know, it's a battle for a pastor. Y'all understand what the Bible says: smite the shepherd, and the sheep will scatter. So the pastor carries an extra burden. Amen. I'm always battling. I'll never forget about St. Louis and prayer. And I know we're not up here that much, but we still carry a burden for you. Amen. And the enemy is fighting us to keep these doors from staying open, but I'm fighting to keep them open. So y'all pray for us. Pray for us. Pray for me and my wife. Amen. We both need your prayer. Amen. Be mindful of the uh, Labor Day revival, Brother Rodney. We'll be back. We'll be outside. We try to keep it because these people are. You see, these people are different. <laughs> Amen. So we're trying to keep the revival not so. I'm not going to put up that banner we usually put up and just hopefully they won't bother us. You know, but we got our flyers back there. Anybody want to get out here and witness, pass our flyers. And we got some tracks. You know, and ask the Lord to give you wisdom. When you're witnessing the people, talking to people in these parking lots. Amen. First of all, you want to say what the Spirit of the Lord is leading you to say. But if you can't think of anything, just ask people if they want prayer. Anybody in your house need prayer? Give them one of them flyers. Invite them out to the revival. Give them one of those tracts that we got back there and just ask them if they'll read it. And if they uh, agree to read it, then ask them if you can read it with them right now and walk them through it. And, you know, God has, the Bible say, he that wins his souls is what? Wow. Is wise. So we need some wisdom. And I believe the Lord wants to save and deliver people even in 2023. Amen. I believe that. That's why we're keeping this. And I'll tell you, everything is so expensive. The hotels, bringing in Brother Rodney, and get, it's just so expensive. Amen. But I'm still determined, Sister Hunter, we're going to get out here for these souls. Amen. Because if we ain't concerned about souls, we ain't, get, we, ain't, we ain't serving no purpose here. Amen. I mean, we need to be reaching out for the lost. Amen. Because somewhere, somebody going to want the real Jesus. Somewhere, somebody going to want more than giving out donuts and coffee. Right. Amen. And talking a lot of who shot John. I've been I've been uh, mentioning this a lot. God ain't called preachers to get in the pulpit and laugh and joke. Amen. We, we have a little uh, folly sometimes. But some people, they whole message just one big joke. And, and people's getting ready to grieve the Holy Ghost. 
People need the word of God. Amen. It's the word that cleans us up. It's the word that brings deliverance. It's the word. The Bible said he sent his word and healed them. Amen. Amen. So you preachers, preach the word. Amen. You may put a little bit in about yourself as it relates to the message. We all do that. But don't just get in and talk about a lot of who shot John. Because that grieves the Holy Ghost. And the Lord ain't going to put up with a lot of nonsense for much longer. Amen. So be praying for these preachers that they get in the will of the Lord. Amen. Because I listened to a tape one day and I was just grieved. I was just grieved on the services I went in. Amen. And somebody just up, just carrying on a bunch of nonsense. And that ain't the Lord. Amen. That ain't the Lord. Amen. So preachers have to get in the Bible, get in prayer, and seek God for the mind of the Lord, for the service. Amen. You won't get up trying to have a comedy show. Praise the Lord Jesus. Well, I'm ruining the service now. Yeah. Praise the Lord. But I'm telling you, we got Sister Beverly's going to be exhorting on the 17th. Praise the Lord. I appreciate Sister Beverly because she's always talking about Jesus. You can't never go wrong talking about Jesus. Amen. And she's always lifting up Jesus. I just feel led to ask her to exhort. Amen. We got some good preachers coming. If the Lord say the same, my wife and I will be headed for uh, Dothan, Alabama, on uh, four day on Wednesday. I'm going to minister down there for Brother Leonard. I uh, made the mistake of telling him we were planning on sneaking down there just to be, you know, the Lord is convincing me that it's more than just needing an apostle and a prophet over me, and I do need that. But I need to get out and be in church somewhere else sometime. You know, and I've been convinced of that, you know, because you get, you know, stirring in your own soup. You don't think there's nothing else beyond your soup. Sometimes you gotta, amen, trade in your chicken noodle for some clam chowder. Amen. <laughs> so, amen. So we're gonna just get away and get down there and be in some services and preach for him. And then we got, um, praise the Lord, on Wednesday night, Sister Debbie will be preaching. Amen. On the Sabbath morning, Big Sister will be preaching. And then next Sunday morning, Brother Carter will be up here. So be praying for the services. Amen. And then also, Sister Adonis is going to minister on Friday night down in the country. But y'all be praying. Amen. For these services. And pray for us while we're traveling. Amen. Brother Ricky, I said somebody I said, Brother Ricky asked, Are we flying? I told somebody, All these comedians out of work when we try to be one. Get on the plane. Okay. I'm driving. Her sister was telling me yesterday about the plane caught on fire or something. But what else you say happened? Pilot, yeah, was chopping down the thing, had a temper tantrum, was chopping down a little arm. You want to get up that 30,000 feet and this guy flying you know, right? Hey man, where we can say he fly to St. Louis if you could. I know some of y'all just hop on planes. <laughs> so the sister Archie, they just fly all the way to Puerto Rico. Don't even think about it. Lord, hell. I, I want to have that kind of courage when I grow up, but I ain't grown up yet. Praise the Lord. I think I'll walk before I fly. <laughs> Amen. I, my, my wife said I'm going to get on a plane one day, but not this trip. Amen. We are driving. Praise the Lord. But one of these old days, but y'all pray for us, and we're just so glad to be in the house of prayer on today. Sister Hannah, how you feeling? Very good. All right then. Amen. Nene, you doing all right? All right then. Praise the Lord. And we're so glad to have Sparta in the house of prayer. Amen. Did uh, Kenny just have a birthday a few weeks ago? Amen. We missed that. We should have called him. Amen. But let's go into the scripture on the day. And we want to talk to you, what we feel in it, and just really feeling the burden of people. Amen. Everybody's going through something. Yeah. Don't think you're the only one that's going through. Everybody's going through something. But the Lord is helping us, isn't it? The Lord is helping us. And I want to encourage you, don't cast away your confidence. You know, Jesus said, have faith in God. Faith in God. The Lord's going to bring you to the other side of all of this that we're going through. You know, and people right now are losing faith in God. That's why Jesus told us 
you know, over there in Luke, when the Son of Man come, shall he find faith on the earth? Amen. That's good. Mm -hmm. Did you do something or do it on his own? Okay, that's good. Shall he find faith on the earth? Because people are losing faith in God. Faith is the victory that helps you to overcome this world. And the most valuable thing you have right now is your faith in God. I don't care if you got a million dollars in the bank, you're better off having $32 in faith in God than having a million dollars. Amen. It's a valuable thing to be able to look up and know it's something up there. Amen. Know it's somebody watching out for your life. Know it's somebody that cares for you. Amen. And is able to help you. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we want to talk on these lines a little bit today. Let's go all the way to the Old Testament. If you have a Bible, if you don't have a Bible, we got some that we can lend you or we can give you if you want one to take home. Amen. We want everybody to have a Bible to read. Uh, a paper Bible, not an electronic Bible. A Bible you don't have to recharge. My Bible is charged 24-7 and I don't ever have to plug it in. Amen. It's got the Holy Ghost flowing through it. Amen. I know I probably shocked some people yesterday, but you need the Spirit of God with the Scriptures. The Scripture by itself, amen, don't breathe like it has to have the Spirit in it. Is that right? Amen. Go ahead, my Ruthie. Help yourself. Somebody else need a Bible. Amen. Oh, don't do that. Okay, that's all right. We'll work on this. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the book of Exodus. Amen. All right, brother, change Get two or three, pass them out. We have this young man in the service. You're in the right place. Exodus, the third chapter. All the way. Second book of the Bible. And don't feel shame if you don't uh, know how to read the Bible, if you don't know how to find these chapters. I first came to church. I was 12 years old, got saved when I was 14. Started reading the Bible and didn't know nothing about it. Didn't know God from Jesus, from Lord, from Savior, from nothing. I mean, nothing. Amen. But I kept reading the Bible and kept coming to church. And Jesus slowly began to reveal himself to me. Amen. Amen. And he'll do that. So don't feel shame if you have to keep looking for the books of the Bible. Because a lot of people, some folk been saved a while, still have to look for them. Praise the Lord. Amen. So don't feel shame. Amen. Exodus, the third chapter. And this is the Lord come down and talking to this man of God out of the burning bush, talking to Moses. And he is sending him back into Egypt to pull the slaves out of Egypt by signs and wonders. And he says here in verse 7, And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows. Let's go all the way to the New Testament. To the book of Romans. Romans the 8th chapter. Romans 8. Look at this verse on 26. Likewise the Spirit. That is the Holy Ghost. Also. Helpeth. Our infirmities. Let me stop here for a minute. Now, infirmities, they are the sicknesses of the body, but they're also the sicknesses of the soul and the spirit. You find in the book of Psalms where David cried, Lord, heal my soul. Amen. So infirmities is not just the things you go through in your body. That's a bigger part of it, but it's also the soul and the spirit. Likewise, the spirit also helps our infirmities, but we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the spirit itself make an intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered, and he that searches the hearts 
knows what is the mind of the Spirit because he made an intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Let's go over here to Hebrews, the fourth chapter. Hebrews 4. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just read this, um, these two verses, 14 and 15. Send then that we have a great high priest, talking about Jesus, that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted, like as we are, yet without sin. Can we pray? Father, we thank you for these scriptures on today. And we ask you to quicken us according to your word. Lord, we know that there's healing and deliverance in your word. If you would spread a table before these people on today, cause us to have ears to hear, hearts to receive. Lord, I know you can reach us by your word. Bless it, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. And from this uh, verse 15, I want to talk to you on the feeling of our infirmities. The feeling of our infirmities. Go back to the Old Testament, to the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs, the 18th chapter. Proverbs. Look at this verse uh, 14. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. Two separate things. But a wounded spirit who can burn. Now, I already described to you that infirmities is more than just what happens to you. It's more than just what happens to you. To your body and let me talk to people who's been through some stuff in the bodies you know the devil came to God and said uh, you got a hedge around Job Job is serving you for naught and the devil said well let me attack everything about him and he'll curse you to your face and so he took all Job's wealth, his animals, his camel, his cattle, amen. And still Job maintained his integrity. So the devil came back around again and said, skin for skin. All that a man had, amen. Let me touch his body, amen. And out of all the trials that you can go through, the one that affects you the most, and the devil knows this, is when something happens either to your children or to your body. And when your kids is in trouble, that's a whole different kind of a burden you can. Amen. And when your body don't act like your body's supposed to act, and you start going through like Sister Rice was testifying, and you can't get no peace in your body, it will eventually start affecting your spirit, whether you know it or not. Am I right, brother boy? You know about going through in your body. Amen. So the song, the uh, Solomon tells us here in Proverbs uh, two separate things. He said the spirit of a man will, if you can accept my interpretation, because I know it's right, will sustain him when he's in sickness. When you're going through, even uh, old doctors would tell you that it pays to have a good spirit when you're going through your sicknesses. Yes. Amen. Bible even say a married heart does good like a medicine. And if your spirit can stay up, that's why the devil wanted to touch Job's body, because he knew if I touch his body, 
Amen. I can give you spirit. And if he can touch your body and get your spirit, this is what the devil counted on. He'll curse you to your face. Because when you start going through your body, it will affect your inner man. You may try not to let it affect you, but it, it's going to weigh on your mind. It's going to weigh on your spirit. That's why the psalmist, that's why he said here in Proverbs, amen, that a spirit of a man will sustain him while he's going through his sickness. But then he took it a little further and said, but a broken spirit, who can bear it? That when your body is going through and all of a sudden your inner man gets attacked, it, it runs on you. The devil starts talking to you about who God is and who God ain't. But my God is still the Lord that heals. Even though it seems like God ain't healing us as fast as we want to be healed. He's still the Lord. Amen. His stripes still heal his people today. The devil wants us to cast away our confidence. Amen. But we got to have something on the inside that says, Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I know my redeemer lives. And he's the same yesterday, today, and ever. What's going on? Even though your body is going through, your spirit man is still standing up strong. And it will sustain you in your infirmity. But he said, a broken spirit man, you, you can't hardly get nothing done. When your inner man is torn down. And it's people that their bodies are still healthy, but they're still living in some kind of depression. There are people depressed, don't know they're depressed. Even though your body is healthy, the devil still got some kind of weight on you. That's why Jesus, in Acts 10, he went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. You may not be oppressed in your body, but your mind can be going through, and sometimes that's worse than your body. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. So he said, the Spirit of God helps our infirmities. Because sometimes you got something wrong with you, you don't know what's wrong with you. You just know, God, something ain't right about me. Something ain't right in my heart. Something ain't right in my life. Something ain't right in my circumstance. And if you got the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will begin to pray through you and make intercession when you don't know what to pray for. Amen. Yes, it, will. it is the Spirit of Jesus Christ. It is, amen, the power of God living on the inside of a man or a woman. And it'll diagnose you because the Spirit searches all things. Even the deep things of God. The Holy Ghost down on the inside of you knows what's going on when your doctor can't figure it out. Everything that you go through in your body ain't your body. Sometimes your body going through because your spirit ain't online. Oh, hallelujah. You get your spirit right and your body gets healed. Oh, hallelujah. Sometimes you're sleepy and tired not because your body, your spirit gets weak. Amen. You go into depression and you'll stay in the bed for three days. Won't even brush your teeth. Lord have mercy. Amen. Spirit gets you going through. Amen. So God had to set a remedy for our outside man and our inside man. Hallelujah, Jesus. There's people right now that I can feel this burden at 1 o'clock in the morning. Just way down. Under what the devil is doing to you. Amen. Way down. Amen. Under the pressures. And, you know, people look at your life and think, well, they got everything together. You don't know, amen, what's going on in somebody's heart behind them. They may look like they got it all together at church. Amen. Fall apart when they get home. Amen. People is under pressures right now. People right now are right at the end. It ain't just out there in the world. Amen. People should. Some of us in here, amen, feel like whooping up on somebody. Oh, look at Jesus. Some of us in here is pressed above strength and beyond measure. Some of us in here, amen, your nerves is just like that. And you can just slap somebody. <laughs> oh, hallelujah, Jesus. People get on your nerves real quick. You need a fast. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Amen. But people are living under some kind of demonic pressing down on you. Even if it ain't your body, your spirit is going through. Your mind is going through. You're tormented in your mind. 
Amen. And sometimes that can be worse than your body when you can't rest that night. Amen. Amen. You ain't got no peace on the inside. It's your inner man that's being trouble. It ain't nothing wrong with you. It's your adversary. The devil is working on you. Amen. And so God sent us Jesus. Now when he told Moses, when he get ready to send him down to Egypt, he said, I know their sorrows. But God couldn't feel what you feel. He knew it. You know they say there's a difference between sympathy and empathy. Sympathy is understanding that a person has troubles or feel. But empathy is when you can feel what they feel. You know what I'm saying? You see somebody get cut real bad and you feel something in the bottom of your stomach and oh God, you don't feel that. You know? Have that where you connected with people. Amen. Sister Brown's got that. You know, she feels what other people feel. But sometimes I don't always feel. You know? And the Lord wants us to have that like Jesus. You know? But the Bible said that when Jesus came, Amen. See, the Bible says in John 3 that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Why? What Paul tells us in Timothy 3.16 that God was manifested in the flesh. Now in Exodus, he said, I know their sorrows. But in Isaiah 53, when he begins to talk about Jesus being manifested, he said he was a man of sorrow and he was acquainted with grief. Paul describes him as a high priest that doesn't just know what we're feeling, but he is touched, not just with our infirmity, but with the feeling of our infirmity. Amen. That's two different things of the infirmity you go through and how you feel about it, how it affects your inner man, how it affects your spirit, and everything you go through. I know you're tough. I know you're strong. I know you're from St. Louis. I know you're bad, but you're hurting on the inside, and you don't want nobody to know it, but there's somebody that you can go through with your trouble, and he knows just how you feel. You know why you're so lonely? Because you can't describe to somebody how you feel. And you talk to this one. And you talk to that one. And they don't feel what you feel. And they don't have the right kind. But there's somebody you can go to. Amen. That when you pour out your heart to him, he is touched with the feeling of what you're going through. He doesn't just know what you're going through. He feels what you feel. This is why he's a faithful hand. This is why he can enter into your circumstance and even though you're depressed and even though you're suicidal and even though you're at the end of your road, there's a man that can get down on the inside and he knows just what you feel. Amen. Like Sister Hunt was testified how he came in and healed her heart. Can't nobody do that but Jesus. Can't nobody get down in there to that brokenness and you trying to talk to them. People go to psychologists and psychiatrists laying on a couch for $50 an hour and they don't know what you're going through. No, they don't. Talk to friends. Talk to church members. Talk to the pastor sometimes. Hey Amen. Sometimes I ain't as sympathetic. And somebody talked me up and hey, Maybe this is where this message came from. They told me, oh, I'm this and oh, I'm that. Huh? And I just began to preach the word. Get over yourself. Use your faith. But you know, sometimes people just need you to hear them. Amen. Don't be so quick to throw out scriptures to people. And God has to help me. You know, because sometimes we don't want to feel what other people feel. But see, the Bible says, rejoice with them that rejoice and weep with them that weep. Didn't say pretend to weep. He said, feel what they're feeling. Amen. When you go out here on the street, don't be so quick to try to fix somebody. Don't be so quick to try to correct what's wrong. First, you got to have an ear to listen to people and understand why they feel the way they feel. And I miss that a lot, brother boy, but God is teaching me, amen, the real compassion of God enters into a person's suffering and gets acquainted with their grief before you try to fix them. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. God is going to help us by holding those to win souls. 
Because a lot of people you meet out here that's bound on drugs and alcohol, they didn't go out here trying to be an alcoholic. They went out there trying to heal something that was hurt on the inside and somebody gave them a pill or a drug or a bottle and said this will help your problem and it didn't do nothing but make it worse and they still hurt it. Now they got a habit on top of it. But you need to go and give them a man. Hey man, they said, I can feel what you feel. I can tell you're hurting. I know why you're down and out like you're down and out. I know a man named Jesus that's been touched with the feeling of your infirmity. Stop being such a high and mighty church member and condescending to men of low estate. Not just their body, but their inner man needs somebody. People need somebody right now. Not just to go out and give them scripture, amen, but to be touched like Jesus was touched. Let's go to Galatians 4. You wonder why you're suffering. You wonder why you're going through. Amen. Not just for yourself. You're going through for somebody else. Jesus went through for somebody else. Everything he suffered was for our benefit. Everything he went through, amen, was for our benefit. Not just to grow us up and get us past our sin, but to help us to understand that even when you're doing well, somebody around you is suffering. And if you only look at their behavior, if you only listen to how they're cursing, if you only look at the drugs they're using or the sex they're having, if you only look at their habits, you will miss that real person on the inside of them. Think about how when you were out there, there was something going on on the inside, you didn't know how to spell it. But your inner man was looking for something and the devil gave you something out here that didn't fix your problem. Amen. Drugs ain't made nobody bad. No, no. Alcohol ain't made nobody bad. No. Sex and uncleanness ain't made nobody bad. It just rearranged your problem. You were still working on the inside. Yes, sir. Amen. You got over your hangover, you were still broken. Yes, sir. Yes. And heal that inner man. You needed somebody that loved you enough to step inside your grief and get down there in that gutter with you. Amen. And know what you were feeling. And be able to fix it. To be able to bind up that brokenness. Psychologists can't do this. You look at these kids that's been abused sexually and mentally, psychologically, and psychologists can't fix this. Sister Stephanie, your kids need Jesus. Raised in gangs and raised by parents that were strung out on drugs. Raised with cursing and raised with guns. And we want to go out there and change their behavior without stepping into their suffering. Uh-uh. You got to feel what they feel. You need the power of God, amen, to reach beyond what they're doing. Hallelujah. I'm talking about sanctified people. I'm talking about some of y'all women. Somebody walk in with, with, with a head rag and, and jeans all the way down there. Y'all y'all grab y'all purse just like little old white ladies. <laughs> oh Lord, what he come in here for? Oh Lord. Somebody call 911 as a black man coming in the store. You're a racist too. Oh Lord. We talk about white people. Some of us black folks is racist too. Oh, I'm, I'm getting down here where we live. You see somebody don't look quite right? Well, wrong looking kind of person comes to the store, you by yourself, you get a little, you know. Oh, holly. We, we judge people by the outlet. Don't be so hard on other people. You judge people by the outlet too. But God can get us past that. Because God don't look how man look. He looks past the outer and he sees that inner man. Sometimes what's wrong with that outer man is just the result of the pain that's on the inside. Amen. So God puts us through some stuff. And allows us to suffer. Go through. Yes, fire perfected. But also so that we can learn something. See, Peter didn't learn what Paul learned. Peter knew Jesus according to the flesh, but Paul didn't know him according to the flesh. Paul lived a life of suffering. When it came to the Gentiles, Peter ministered as long as he was seeing a vision. But when the Jews came back around, the Bible said he separated from the Gentiles. Amen. And Paul had to confront him to the face. 
Because he was the apostle to the Gentiles. He knew what it meant to be an outcast. He knew what it meant to always suffer and to be looked at differently. And it made a difference in how he ministered to people. What you saying, Pastor? I'm saying if you get to suffering enough, you'll learn how to have compassion on other people who are suffering. I'm going to take you from kindergarten to college here in a few minutes. Galatians 4. But the first thing, we got to give people the same compassion that we receive from Jesus. It takes the love of God. Galatians, the fourth chapter. Paul was a different kind of preacher. 4 and 20. Brother, I beseech you, be as I am, for I am as ye are. You have not injured me at all. You know how that through infirmity of the flesh I preached the gospel to you at the first. And my temptation which was in my flesh you despised not, nor rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. Paul said my ministry wasn't a ministry of ease. It wasn't a ministry of comfort. He said I had to preach the gospel through infirmity of my flesh. He had to, amen, suffer and go through and still fulfill the will and the work of God. What are you saying? You don't get to go on vacation because you suffer. God still commanded you go into the field and labor. And use what you're going through to minister to somebody else. Amen. amen. The Lord is going to help us, amen, to get over ourselves. It's more than just about you. Jesus said, lift up your eyes and look on the field. They are white already to harvest. That there are people out here that are hurting and they need a gospel coming through a vessel that knows what it is to go through some suffering. To know what it is to have infirmities. To know what it is, amen, to see people, amen, that are outcasts and on the margin of society. This is the ministry of Jesus Christ. John, the 11th chapter. God's got to give us a measure that will reach people. You can't reach people from your high and lofty. God's got to get us where we're acquainted. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. I don't know about y'all, but everything I went through is working for my good. Amen. If you will seek God and pray in your suffering and ask God, Lord, what do you have me to learn here? I know it's sometimes. See, Paul said everywhere and in all things I'm being instructed. God is always talking to his children. There's something you need to be learning out of what you're going through. And the Lord wants you to get every single lesson. And some people wonder, why am I still suffering the same thing over and over and over again? Maybe you haven't learned your lesson. Maybe you're going through the same test now that you went through 10 years ago because you're not learning the lesson. The lesson isn't get better and get hard and get vindictive. The lesson may be get on the altar and learn how to weep and cry and ask God for mercy and then go out and show mercy to somebody else. Sometimes we don't learn the lesson. It ain't that God is unjust. Sometimes we're hard-headed. I am. I know I ain't the only one. I'm looking around. I ain't the only one that have a hard time learning my lesson. Because the devil wants to make what you're going through about other people. And it's not about other people. It's about you and how you can be a blessing to other people. Not blame other people. John 11. He's going to give us a measure to reach. I know what the devil tells you. You can't reach these people. These people, different kind of people. These are the same kind of people. Amen. And God's got a measure to reach people right where they are. And he's got a people that can reach people. Amen. So Angie, you got a burden for people. Amen. But you need something to reach them. 
You ain't got what you need right now to reach them, but God's going to take the burden that he put on us and give us a measure, Paul said, to reach people right where they are. You can't clean people up and bring them to church. you got to give them the word out there where they are and reach them right where they are. I'm going to take you to church so pastor can preach to you. Uh-uh, you're going to go preaching out there. Everybody ain't coming to church. And those that do come to church may not be coming to this church. Take the word to people right where they are. Minister to people right where they are. Get down in the gutter. Don't be like that priest. Don't be like that Sadducee. Look at the man in the gutter. Be like that good Samaritan to get down where they are. I can feel what you're feeling. That's why you got to give the homeless people sometimes. Not all the time because there's some crooks out there. But there's some real people out there that's hungry. It's some real people, and if you just completely shut down and say they're all crooked, it's no sign. You got to recognize somebody has a real need, and somewhere you need to be given to somebody, sometime, and not just you yourself and I. And I tell you the truth about it. God didn't ever call us to get up in the church and forget about a lost and dying world. There's people out there, and you got what they need. Amen. Jesus was what I needed for my soul. Still, what I need. Everything that's wrong with me, Jesus is the remedy. Amen. Let's go over here to John 11. Now what did Hebrews say? We have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmity. Look at this John 11, 35. Shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus Well, What are you weeping for? You're not weeping for Lazarus. He knew Lazarus was going to die and be resurrected while he was still sick. He's weeping because he feels all this burden around him yeah. that they're weeping. Yeah. They're weeping needlessly. When he went into Iris' house, he said, Weep not. The maid is not dead, but sleeping. So they're weeping needlessly, but because he feels, because he is acquainted with grief, he can't help but weep too. Because it's not just their infirmity, it's the feeling. He feels what they feel. Let's go over here to Matthew. It's going to shift you real quick. And then I'm going to let you know. You have to allow Jesus to come in and minister to your brokenness, what you're feeling because of what you're going through. Now, read you Proverbs, you can make it through what you're going through as long as your spirit stays okay. Amen. But when your spirit gets broken because of what you're going through, you start going down. The Lord has to, even though he don't change your circumstance, he has to fix that inner man. Yes. And some circumstances, just like Paul in Corinthians 12, when he sought the Lord to remove that thorn in the flesh, the Lord didn't take away the thorn. That's why he's saying, Galatians, I preach to you through these infirmities, but the Lord gave him grace. I said, my grace is sufficient right where you are. Keep on learning what you're learning, but I'm going to give you grace. I'm going to fix your inner man. Even though you're outward, man, circumstance hasn't changed. Let's go over here to Matthew 14. Look at this man of sorrows. Acquainted with grief. Somebody get for me real quick Hebrews, the fifth chapter, verse 1 and 2. I'm going to read this Matthew 14. There ain't nothing wrong with you, Jesus can't fix. That's right. There's there something wrong with you. You ain't like other people. Other people ain't like other people. Oh, Stop comparing yourself to other people. You think they got it all together. They ain't got it all together. It's people living in million dollar houses. They ain't nothing but a wreck. Ain't nothing keeping them going but alcohol and duct tape. Oh, my God. Well, alcohol and duct tape, they fought. I mean, yeah. lawyers. Y'all heard about this brown and brown lawyer? The brother? Jumped out of the window, killed himself. These people on TV, these people probably earning millions. Of, it, it ain't how much money you got. Some people that look like they got it all together, they're a wreck on the inside. Yes, sir. And don't you think that your life is worse off? It's going to take Jesus for us all to make it through what's happening to the world right now. It's going to take somebody that knows how we feel and will. Sometimes you know how people feel, but you don't want to get your hands dirty. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. God's going to help us get past being standing on the sidelines. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. God didn't call you as a spectator. You have to get in there and get involved. But people, I mean, every single one of us. 
whose life are you getting involved with? How are you inconvenienced by somebody else? When you would take care of yourself, I'm asking you this question. How is somebody else's life getting you out of your own circumstances? This is what compassion is about. This is Jesus over here in Matthew, the 14th chapter. When Jesus heard of it, what did he hear of? He heard that Herod had killed his cousin, John the Baptist. The only other man out here lifting up the truth, just him and Jesus, only two out here lifting up the truth. And now John the Baptist has been beheaded. Don't you know that affected him? Don't you know that did something to his heart when he heard that? When he heard of it, he departed thence by a ship into a desert place apart. What does that apart mean? He wanted to be alone by himself. I'm hurting. You ever hurt so bad you didn't want nobody? Yeah. They couldn't nobody help you? They couldn't feel your pain, your grief. They couldn't step inside of it. And they tried to say words, but their words couldn't reach you. And sometimes you just wanted to be by yourself. Yeah. Oh, y'all ain't going to say amen to that. This is what Jesus was. It hurt so bad. That his mission was to seek and to save that which is lost. But for the right now, he wants to be by himself. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the city. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude. And he was moved with what? Toward them. And he healed their sick. You know why? You know why he was able? You know why he was able to get over his own feeling of grief? Because their need overcame his own personal need. When you minister to somebody else, you ever had a need or you was hungry or you were tired and you found somebody to minister to just like Jesus and John for and that hungry and that tired left you when you got to minister in the word and they came back to Jesus talking to that woman at the world and said, Master, eat. He said, I have meat to eat that you know not of. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. He stepped outside of himself and while he was ministering to her, his need was supplied. Somebody said, oh, but I'm so sick, Pastor. I'm so pitiful. My life is minister to somebody else and see if God won't work out your problem while you're ministering to some. Get over yourself. Use the grief and the sorrow and the heartbreak that you feel to minister to somebody else. Amen. Compassion. Hebrews, the fifth chapter, verse two. Somebody read one and two. Uh huh. Compassion on the ignorant. Stop judging people by what they're doing and look beyond that and see there must be some kind of need here, God. Yes. Go ahead, sweetheart. And on them that are out of the way, uh -huh. for that he himself also is compassion. Why can't he have compassion? Because he's going through the same thing. Yes. You got to have compassion on somebody. Y'all read Matthew 18? That servant that owed his law so much money turned out to be $1.2 million in conversion. And he didn't have nothing to pay. And his master said, sell him, sell his wife, sell everything he got and pay the debt. And he began to pray, please don't, I'll pay y'all, have compassion. And when he said that, his master forgave him of all that he owed, $1.2 million if it was a talent of gold. Then he went and found his fellow servant, the Bible says, and took him by the throat. And this guy owed him $12.32. Took him by the throat and said, pay me that thou owest. And when the man didn't have nothing to pay, he sent him to jail, the same thing his master. And when his master heard about it, he called him on the carpet, didn't he do it? He said, I had compassion on you. You ought to have had compassion on somebody else. Why do we need God to help us and pick us up and heal our broken and feel our infirmity so that we can go out and do the same thing to somebody else? Amen. 
What did he say when he told us the parable of the Good Samaritan? Go and do thou likewise. Fill with somebody else. Don't be so quick to judge people, but feel what they are feeling. People are hurting right now. I'm preaching this message to myself. Y'all do what y'all want to do. I got to get past always wanting to fix people and get down there and have compassion on people. Because you can't. Sister Debbie told me something years ago and I never forgot. She said, people, because I was the smartest. You know, I was I was brainiac. I was a bookworm. You know, I was, I was always the smartest one in the room. That's how stupid I was. But Sister Debbie told me something. She said, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Man, that's stuck with me. You got to love people where they are. You got to be willing to step into their circumstance just like Jesus and be touched with the feelings. Stop trying to fix them. Hey Amen. You need to do this and you need to do that. I'm mad about that. Hey Amen. But first get down there where they are and understand why they feel the way they feel. It might not be as easy to fix as your flip mouth is telling them. Amen. I've given people flip answers. Get over it. You're tough. Use your faith. Uh -uh. Sometimes you got to get down there and cry with people. Job's friends came to him and they sat for seven days and said nothing. Just sat with him in his grief. Y'all understand it? What I'm saying here, compassion will move you for somebody other than yourself. It's time to graduate. You need the Lord to help you, but then you need to turn that and go help somebody else. You take all that the devil has done to destroy you and use it to have compassion yes. for somebody else. Yes. Amen. Let the Lord heal your broken heart. Because the devil wants you to sit there in your stew and woe is me and woe is me. And don't pull me down. Somebody understand. Yes. Somebody will step into that grief with you. Somebody will heal your brokenness. Somebody feels what you feel. Somebody's acquainted with your grief. You got to let him in there. You got to invite him into your grief and say, Lord, help me. You not have words to put to it, but if all you can say is, Lord, have mercy, the devil's trying to kill me, telling me to blow my brains out, take a bunch of pills that I'll never come out, Lord, help me, and he'll reach down in the midst of that and pull you up out of that, and then he'll say, go help somebody else now. You can't help somebody if you're in the ditch yourself. You need the Lord to pull you out, but when he pulls you out, he's pulling you out for a purpose to go help somebody else. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Take all of that that you want to stew in and cast that on the Lord. Somebody knows what you feel. Let's go to first Peter. I gotta let y'all go, but I'm telling you, hey man, God is raising up ministers to get out here. I ain't talking about just with a microphone on the street corner. I'm talking about finding people one-on-one -on -one and getting down there, getting your hands dirty, spending a little bit of your money and putting something into somebody else because the Lord has led you with compassion to reach this person. People need help right now. Amen. And don't try to change them right off. Amen. If they naked, close them. But don't try to change everything about it. You need to take off your earring. You need to take off this. Leave people alone and let them get healed first. Amen. Well, Amen. I want you to know how holy I am. They don't care. They don't. <laughs> they need Jesus. Amen. When you read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the only people Jesus ever rebuked was church people. Yes, he did. He never rebuked sinners. The only thing he would say to sinners is go and sin no more. Or he would tell them what they're doing wrong, but he never chided them. He never rebuked them. He never reproved them. He never reprimanded them. He always met them with compassion. Didn't look down on them. First Peter 5 and 7. Lord, help me get over myself. You know what Paul told one bunch? Have you suffered so many things in vain? If I'm going through, I want to learn something from it. Amen. If I'm receiving compassion, I want to learn how to give compassion. But you can't give compassion until you let the compassion of the Lord heal your broken heart. And he'll bind up your brokenness. Home. And then Peter says, 5 and 6, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you. Pull you up out of that. Amen. In due time. You may have to suffer a while, but you're going to come out of it. Yes, you will. 
in due time, casting how much of your care? One hundred percent. Most of us ain't got past sixty percent. We still carrying that stuff. He told us to cast on him. We still trying to handle stuff instead of passing it on to the Lord. Don't we do it? I do it, and y'all do it too. Trying to work stuff out. Trying to make stuff right. Trying, some things you can't handle. You just have to pass it on to the Lord. Lord, you handle this. I can't do it. Amen. Let me go back to Romans 8. Let me go to Galatians 5 real quick. Galatians 5. He knows how you feel. He wants you to know how others feel. Help me, Lord. I want to win the loss. And I want people to come to open door, but if they don't, that's fine. It's Jesus you want people to come to. So Lord, help me to get over Michael Gray. Y'all got some stuff in y'all y'all need to get over? To minister to somebody else? I say, help me, I'm sad, I'm depressed. Child, I'm depressed too. You need to go to somebody else. Uh uh. Jesus people are going to forget about their own pain and minister to somebody else. Because we're going to cast ours on him because we already know him. Amen. We're going to be able to minister to somebody else that don't know him. Amen. Amen. See, here's the thing. Most of us got over smoking, drinking, drugs. I said most of us. <laughs> you know? Got over chasing boys and all that. But we still got to get over our feelings. What we go through. Let me say this. Saved people cannot be emotionally unstable. That's true. You go on your job, you don't get to go on your job having a bad day, grumping, slamming the door, mad at people, won't speak to nobody because you had a fight with your husband or your wife. You don't get to do that. You are an ambassador. Even if you had a fight with your wife, when you show up among the sinner, hey amen, you let all that go. I'm here. Even when I ain't talking to nobody, don't you know they're watching you? Even when you ain't talking to them, they're looking for that light to shine out of you. They're looking for something from your direction. They're looking for something in you to say, everything's going to be all right. Amen. Amen. Patricia's in the building. Brenda's in the building. Amen. Sister Nita's in the They're looking to feel something. They feel something from you even when you don't say a word. Jesus said you can walk in a house and say, I'm taking my peace and I'm putting my peace on this house. Oh, y'all don't know what you got in you. Y'all don't know what you got on the inside because the devil's got you all bogged down in your feeling. Uh-uh. Cast all that junk on him and crucify your flesh with the affection, not just the love, but the feeling. Oh, hallelujah. He wants to take all of that. See, we want him to take away the infirmity, but sometimes the things we're going through are going to last a while, but he'll take away that that thing don't get you depressed. He'll take away the feeling of it. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Somebody said, how can you have victory when everything in your life is turned upside down? Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Because there's peace that passes understanding. Because greater is he that is in me than anything that's out here in this world. I got a whole kingdom living on the inside so I can cast all of my care. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I'm getting over the feeling of my infirmity because he takes every bit of it. You got to set out the garbage. Garbage man don't come in your house collecting garbage. You got to put it out. You got to put it out on the curb and say, I don't want this no more. See, that's what you do when you get in prayer and you start opening up, amen, and saying, Lord, this is how I feel, amen, and I had a fight with this one, and my wife don't understand, and I'm upset about it, and my heart is hurt, all my, all my church people don't understand, all my relatives don't understand, mama, brother, sister, daddy don't understand, but I'm hurt, I'm mad right now, I want to slap somebody, I want to stop going to church, I don't want to go out and get drunk, you bring all of that, and they'll just sit on the office and say, mm, mm. Uh -uh, you better open your mouth. That's how you cast your cup. You expose that garbage to daylight and say, Lord, here's all my garbage. I'm putting it out on the curb because I want you to take it away. Lord, have mercy. Am I speaking English? 
This is how you get over this thing. Never wants to keep it all locked inside. You tough. You strong. No, you ain't either. You're a weakling. Your only strength is in him. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his mind. Your spirit may be willing, but your flesh is weak. Flesh can't do this by itself. I need some help. I need somebody up there who knows what it is to feel what I feel. And I'm going to take all this going, I'm putting it in his life, and then I'm going to go minister to somebody else. Galatians, the fifth chapter. Verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, generous, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against us there is no law. And they that are Christ, y'all belong to Jesus, have crucified the flesh. They stopped smoking, they stopped drinking, they stopped abusing their body with all kind of uncleanness, but they also, amen, crucify the affections and the lust. Amen. The feelings, those affections are feeling up one day, down the next, in and out. People don't know how you're going to feel from one minute to the next. You can't be that kind of Christian. You got to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the world. That means you're on 24 7. Amen. People think I get upset. I don't get upset when people call me at 3 in the morning. When the phone rings at 3 in the morning, I'm on. My wife just handed it over to me. It's on her side of the bed. She's going to answer. <laughs> Amen. But when they call, she say, they call at 3. I've had them call drunk. Just want to say to me. I just hold the phone. <laughs> you are on 24-7. There's going to be people calling you for prayer and you don't get to be off. You don't get to have it off there. You don't get to have an attitude or a bad spirit. You can cast that on here when they call you and say, I need help right now. Hey man, the devil's trying to take me out of here. I'm about to lose my mind. You got to be on duty. Hallelujah, yeah. Jesus. You got to handle your garbage so that you are able to handle somebody else. You can't handle yours and theirs. You got to pass yours off so you can handle theirs. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, have mercy. Is that good? All right. Let's go to Galatians. Let's finish this. Have crucified the flesh with the affections and the feeling. Lord has been speaking this verse 25 to me and my big sister. If you live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory. Provoking one another, ending one another. What are you saying? You're not here battling and competing with other people. You're here to minister Amen. to other people. Let's finish up in Romans 8. Cast all your care on him. He cares for you. Yes, he He'll take every burden you got, how your heart feels. Yes. He'll bind up your broken heart, say, now you're ready. Yes. He'll patch you back up and send you right back into the fire. Y'all see these boxing matches? Man, these guys look worse. I big old, they got big old, they just cut it, let the blood run out, put something back on us, and they get back out there and keep fighting. Yeah. Romans 8. Verse 27. The Lord's going to help us meet this generation, I believe. He ain't give up on this generation. All these judgments of God in the land, people's eyes getting ready to come open. There's a God up there. There's a God up there. Likewise, also. The Spirit helps our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we are. You ain't got to spell out what's wrong with you. He knows what it is. But the Spirit itself makes it innocent. I mean, if you don't know what it is. Y'all know what I'm saying. If you know what it is, tell them what it is. But a lot of times, you don't even know what it is. You just know it. You just don't feel right. <laughs> I'm thinking about my wife. Lord, help you be on the other room. Ow! Honey, what's wrong? Nothing. <laughs> you sound like you're dying in there. She's tough. She got to learn how to be weak. Say, honey, I need a hug. Hallelujah. Sometimes you don't know what's wrong. You just know it's hurting. Spirit itself make intercession for us with groanings, which cannot be uttered. He that searches the heart knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And the saints make intercession for the world. Is that right? But we know that all things, somebody say all things, no matter what it is, it's working for you good. 
work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose, for whom he did foreknow. God's got people out there still that need to come in. You weren't the last person to get saved. Whom he did foreknow, he also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, then he also called. And whom he called, then he also justified. And whom he justified, then he also glorified. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. I learned that from my big sister. He's always for you. No matter what your circumstance is, he's always on your side. Who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Put your hands together and praise the Lord. If you can receive the word on today. Father, we thank you for these good scriptures. Lord, that you give us a little grace on the trail through this darkness and all this opposition. But I know there's victory on the other side. I know you're a God of your word, that you're not a man, that you should lie. That you're going to bring this word to pass, even here in this city where the enemy is fighting so hard against us. And all these things are but a stepping stone to the will of God being worked out in the lives of these people in this bad neighborhood. Lord, for as long as you would have us here, or whatever neighborhood you would have us in, whatever circumstance in our personal homes or on our jobs, or in our families, or in the grocery stores, or that there are people all around us, that you would have the scales fall from our eyes to see beyond all their pain, and all their hurt, all their behaviors, Lord, and look down to that inner man, Lord, and have the compassion for them that you have for us. Help us to go and do likewise. Put it in us to be moved with this same compassion towards others as we receive from you, to heal our soul heal our brokenness and to help us through life. Lord, many of us couldn't make it through these things if it wasn't for your grace, for your mercy, your comfort, your compassion. Help us to show these same things to others in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord one more time. Thank you so much for your attention. For school, Sister Daniel. I tell you, you better pray over your kids going to these schools. You better pray over going to these schools. These schools are something else. The worst we had was a fight on, at lunchtime. And these kids are having to go through it. What you need, sister? Hold on. Lord, we're going to get all this soreness, all this trauma. Lord, that she's gone through. Lord, this body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Lord, you go in and heal. Lord, cause all this to be mended and take all this pain. Right now, we cast it on you that your stripes has already healed my sister and made her whole. We believe for it and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. I tell you what, ain't a man here, ain't a man here that knows what it's like to have a baby. They may be in the delivery room, but they don't know what that pain is like. But see, another woman knows what that pain is like. You know, and so when you go through something, use the hurt of that to minister to somebody else. And let the love of God amen, minister to somebody because you've been through some. Lord, touch these young people. Lord, watch over them in these schools, going back to these schools. Lord, you would think that they'd be worse in the city, in the country, but they're bad all over. A lot of these schools tragedies happen in small towns not just big cities watch over our kids hide them in you Jesus shield them like you did sister Patty's Lord daughter and sister Shirley Carter's granddaughter Lord we ask you to watch over these kids cover them with your blood go to these schools Lord we are loyal on the little African shirt the little, is it Kwanzaa? okay no, I know it's not Kwanzaa Amen. They look so good. Uh, they look after these shirts. Lord, watch over these kids. Cover them with your blood. Watch over them. Lord, as we anoint them. Lord, you be their buckler and their shield. Lord, let the grace of God settle on these children. Lord, that mama say, 
Lord, let that same grace be on their mind. Lift your hands. You owe nothing on Jesus. You go up like that. In Jesus' name. Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, anoint his life. Lord, anoint him, Lord, for these drugs and for this kingdom of God. Shield him and keep him from the evil. Lord, you pray for the disciples, not that the Father would take them out of the world, but keep them from the evil. Keep them, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray for you too. Father, keep my son from the evil of this generation. Lord, it's so bad in this city, in these schools. It's such a demon going around for these young men. Lord, watch over him. Cover him with your blood. Let the power of the Holy Ghost come on him, even in his home and in his school. Bring him into a new level by your power and by your spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I, I was his age in school. I had women chasing me. And I wasn't as good looking as he did. Coming to the principal's office, grabbing on me, trying to kiss me. I had to go out the other door. <laughs> it's devil, man. The Bible says seven women would take hold of one man. Amen. Because half of them out there gay, they looking for any man they can find. Just grab a hold of them. You got to be careful. Keep your eyes open. What you do? Okay. Amen. Lord, we're anointed. Aurora, Lord, going back to these schools. She would keep her, watch over her. Shield her from the wrong kind of people. Shield her from satanic influence. Lord, sometimes people will come with a smile and what looks good, but there's evil behind it. Or even young kids, Lord, you can't trust all these kids and got on the internet and demons have gotten a hold of even young kids. Watch over her. Shield her from any evil intent and cover her with your blood. Fill her with the Holy Ghost and bring her into your kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes, Father, I want my sister I want to go out here with this burden that she continually carries. Give her a measure to reach so she feels fruitless. She feels like she's not getting anything done. But only the kingdom of heaven knows what she's already got done. But help her, Father, to reach toward her burden, the extent of the burden that she put on her. Lord, help that burden to reach these young men of this inner city to break these yokes and pour down these strongholds for Jesus, to bring men out of darkness into this marvelous light. Lord, if it's finances, if it's a greater move of the Holy Ghost and a greater grace, Lord, bless her with whatever the need is, Lord, to reach these young people in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I want to touch my daughter. Lord, by your spirit, Lord, she's been up here in this city. You kept her all these years. But she's wanting to get back to the country. Lord, open the door and make a way for her. Lord, to get down there. Lord, you're making a way for her family members. Open these doors. Lord, get her out of this city. Lord, don't just get her out of the city. Get her into the Holy Ghost. Not just into the country, but into the power of God. Lord, baptize her with fire. Lord, do a new thing in her inner man. By the Holy Ghost, let a light come in. The Lord's going to bless you in a spiritual way. He's seen your hunger. He's seen the desire of your heart. And all that you suffered and gone through, the Lord's going to help you to help somebody else through the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah to you. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, we touch her for her sister. Lord, she knows the truth. Help her, Lord, to surrender. Give her the grace, Lord, whatever city she's in, Lord, reach to her. Lord, heal all of this that's underlying the feeling of her sister's infirmity. We send the word, Lord, that you would bind up, Lord, whatever needs binding up. And, Lord, touch my sister, Archie, Lord, with a fresh anointing and a new stir, even in the Holy Ghost. Lord, that while she's at home, that the praying in tongues comes with tongues of fire. Lord, not just struggling through prayer, struggling in the mornings, but Lord, a fire to come down on the altar by the Holy Ghost. Lord, a newness in the Spirit of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Holy the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. 
if I can touch her for her vision, Lord, this miracle she needs from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. Lord, reach her with your compassion, the feeling of her infirmity. Lord, some people just write her off, Lord, but you know how she feels going through these things in her body. In the name of Jesus, touch her. Bring her out of these things. Lord, make a difference in her life by your stripes. Make her whole. Do something for her in the Holy Ghost. Break these yokes and these bondages off her household, off her soul, and off her family. In Jesus' name, amen. What you need prayer for? You don't know. Your feet just brought you up here with a distant wheel. All right, man, lift your hand. I'm going to touch my daughter. Which one is you? Join the leader. I'm going to touch her by your grace. Lord, draw her to the foot of the cross. Help her, Lord, going back to school. All these things, these young people. Lord, sometimes us adults don't understand what these young people go through, but you understand. Lord, help her when she prays to make contact with you. Watch over her and shield her. Lord, enter into, Lord, her grief and her sufferings and the things, Lord, that agitate her spirit and soul. Make her whole, Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for our kids. Amen. Lift your hand. Lord, touch her. Lord, back to these schools. Watch over her. Lord, hear her prayer and her cry. Lord, enter into the feeling of her infirmities, these burdens that she may carry. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to be with these children. Lord, when mama can't be with them, grandmama can't be with them, you can be with them, shield them. Let that angel wrap his wings around them in these schools. Lord, in every saint of God here, we pray for their children and their grandchildren. Every believer under the sound of my voice, Lord, let this prayer go out. Lord, even to Arizona and New York, Texas and other places where our kids are, watch over them. Watch over our grandkids. Let your blood cover them in the name of Jesus as we pray, Lord, for this child. We pray for all our children. Cover them in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. How you doing? Give me a hug. I ain't seeing you this year. Amen. What you need? Okay, Father, we anoint her against these problems in this right eye. Lord, the devil is a liar. You are healing. Lord, this not being able to see out of this eye, we curse it in your name. Lord, we command the vision to return to both eyes, 2020. Lord, when she won't even need glasses, you're a miracle worker, and we're holding you to your word that by your stripes you heal my sister in Jesus' name. Strengthen her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet and make her whole from every affliction and infirmity in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, somebody. Amen. Thank you. You want to pray? You want to speak to you? Lord, touch these grandbabies. Lord, by your spirit, watch over them. God, help them to develop a relationship with you. Lord, you chose Samuel and Josiah at very young ages. You got a hold. Lord, get a hold of this child by your spirit for your glory. Let her be a witness and a testimony to her mama. That her mama sees the power and the spirit of God on her life. Lord, move on this child. We dedicate her again to you for this kingdom of God. Be a shield and a buckler by the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Let her astound people like you did when you were 12 years old. The things that come out of her mouth. You said out of the mouth of babes and suckling, you have perfected praise. Perfect your word coming out of her mouth in Jesus' name. You'd be surprised what these kids get in them. While you sleep and they listen. <laughs> Touch Sister Rice, strengthen her. It's all these things that's trying to stop her from being a prayer warrior. Trying to stop her from being an intercession. But Lord, you sent her through enough. Lord, to have her to be moved with compassion. Lord, her heart's been broken enough. Now she turns all that to you. And she breaks for other people. She weeps for other people. She moans for other people. And Lord, let her spirit come on her in that house. Like I've heard her pray before. Restore the years. The devil is not shut out of you. That the Holy Ghost is restoring all things in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, us. Huh? 
Father, you've heard all this request, this burden for these souls, or the her souls, but the your souls first. Lord, we ask you to move for this circumstance. We need a miracle. But you're a miracle working God. We'll never draw back from asking you and letting our requests be made known. Here we are standing together, and you said if any two of us on earth agree as touching anything that we shall ask, that it will be done of our Father in heaven. We join our faith together for this circumstance, for these souls that she's burning for. Lord, I enter into this burden with her, Lord, that you will work things out, that you will work a miracle, Lord, that you will open the door. You're he that opens and no man shuts, and you're he that shuts and no man can open. We trust you, Lord, to open this door and make a way in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'll let you close out. Amen. Anybody else? Father, in Jesus' name, move for Sister Aretha. Help her, Lord, with this compassion you put in her heart for others. All she's been through, Lord, to reach others. Their suffering, what they're going through, make a way. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Somebody praise the Lord. Okay. Lord, she needs a financial. We're green on earth. Lord, if you got to put money in the fish's mouth, Lord, do it for this circumstance. You say you will supply all our need, and we cast the current of it on you, Lord, that you will work this out in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to ask you to come and give. Amen. If you have anybody that can come up from the country, we sure appreciate having you if you can get here. Amen. Help us out in the outside revival. I believe this word needs to be out there on the street. Y'all believe that? We got flyers, we got tracks to pass out. Amen. So whenever you have a burden to do that, do that. And then when the revival is here, amen, you know we'll be here praying Monday and Tuesday at noon. And then we always go out and witness and pass out those tracks and flyers that Monday and Tuesday. We'll have Sunday morning service here Sunday night, Monday night, and Tuesday night. Amen. Uh, Sunday before Labor Day, Labor Day, and then uh, Tuesday after Labor Day. We'll be here at 7 o'clock starting the service. Amen. Sister Hunter's going to testify, and then she's going to close out the service. Let's praise the Lord as she comes today. Oh, Sister Grady's got... Yeah, we have to Lord for this word that had went forth. In 2 Corinthians, I just want to give a confirmation on it. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, it tells us that that, that the Lord had comforted us with in our trouble, that we would go and comfort somebody else. And I thought about that when Brother Mike was going forth, that we would feel, you know, I've said that before, that we would feel what people was going through with. And I just thank the Lord because another thing came to me while he was talking about these songs. You know, we got five grandchildren that have come from Texas and they have been abused. And they have uh, been on the, they be on that iPad from day to night. I could get up late at night and they are on that iPad. One of them stays with me. And you know, I just can I just wanted to snatch the iPad and didn't give it to them no more. But they get attitudes. And when I say attitudes, I mean bad attitudes. And this boy is 15, you know. So I, I didn't know what to do. And I went to the Lord and asked him 
Lord, you're going to have to teach me how to deal with him. And the Lord is showing me how, that's the same way Brother Mike was saying, the Lord is going to have to show us how to deal with these souls. Now, I can go up to him and I can tell Brother Mother that I pay no good, that I ain't paying no good. It don't do nothing that. You know, I can go up to him like that and I can snatch it from him like that. And if I, I see that if I snatch it like that, I'm going to have a problem. I can see that. So the Lord gave me the wisdom how to deal with him with that iPad. And it is working out. Sometimes we have to pray about a problem, you know. Yeah. We can't solve them. The Lord has to give us the understanding how to even deal with people. I just wanted to say that because I thought about that when he was, uh, you know, talking about the soul. Father, let everybody stand. Lord, we thank you this morning, Lord, and we thank you for the word of God. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy and trust. Most of all, I thank you for showing me me in the name of Jesus. Look upon each and every one in this place. Let your will be done in our lives. Lord, I was reading in Proverbs what was said. We need that wisdom and that knowledge and that understanding. How to go in and out before your people. How to deal with one another, Lord. God, in Jesus' name, we ask you to move for us. I believe you're stirring us up, Lord. I believe through going through these hardships and going through these pains, you're doing something for us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I ask you to cover each and every one with your blood. Bless us as we go on that dangerous highway, in the name of Jesus. We give you the glory, and we give you the thanks. Restore us back, Lord. And I believe you're doing that. I believe you're restoring your people back, God. I believe you're restoring me back, God, in Jesus' name. Amen.